So if you're anything like me, you'll see this when you use ChatGPT, memory full. And this sucks as information is what gives AI its superpowers. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can create your own AI assistant that can have unlimited memory. And you can have it powered by whichever model you'd like, OpenAI, Claude, Gemini, whatever. We're gonna use NA10 and Airtable for this, both of which have free versions which you can use. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so we are in N8N now, and uh, before I talk you through it, I'm going to show you essentially how it works. So in this chat, I'm going to say, uh, knowing what you do about me, plan out a perfect weekend. And it's going to go, and it's going to go and get what it knows about me, which I'm storing in Airtable, and it's going to come back with a little plan for a weekend, um, taking into consideration a couple of things which it knows that I like. So here we go. It says Friday evening, uh, dinner at pizza place. Does it know, knows I like pizza? Uh, in the morning, um, it says something to do with food, Formula One. I love Formula One. Uh, something to do with pizza again, a lot more pizza, relaxing brunch, uh, wind down. Okay, so what it's doing here, very basic. I haven't given it that many memories, so it doesn't have really much to come from. But you can see over here on Airtable, I've got a very, very simple table, uh, which just has a list of memories. I like pizza, I used to live in Italy, I like Formula One, and the user lives in the UK. And this is what it's using to create uh, that output knowing what it knows about me. So um, before we go through the workflow, let me add some more information into that. Okay, so I'm gonna put in here, I also uh, really like motorbikes. bikes. So let's put that in there and that's gonna put the memory into Airtable. If we look in Airtable, here we see the user really likes motorbikes. So now I can reload this chat. So it's not using the window buffer memory, which we'll talk about in just a second. I can reload the chat and I can say, um, knowing what you do about me, who do you think my favorite uh, MotoGP rider is? It's a bit of a broad question, um, but let's see if it can have a guess. So here we go, Valentino Rossi, exactly. It sees that I used to live in Italy and got a strong connection with motorbikes and it says Valentino Rossi, and that is using the memories. So let's have a look at how this actually works. It's very, very simple. There are a lot of other ways you can do this. However, this is the most simple one to get this working as soon as possible so that you can store as many memories as you want with a language model, which could be helpful in so many situations, especially within business. So um, let's hide this and let's have a look at the workflow. So we are running this just within the chat widget within NA10. However, in my other videos, I've shown you how you can take a chat that's running in NA10 and actually put that on your website or anywhere that you want uh, around the internet so that anyone can use it. But essentially what we're doing is um, a chat comes in and when a chat comes in, we are going to Airtable and we are finding this table within Airtable, which is called Memories. I've just got a free account set up with Airtable, so no payment needed. Um, one table, and it's very, very simple. All that I've got in here is memory, and it's gonna return all of those bits of information. And then when it's received all of those memories from Airtable, it's gonna aggregate them, so it puts it just into one single string. Then what we're doing is we're using that list of memories when we go and speak to OpenAI or whichever large language model you want to use, and we are defining our own prompt here and we are saying you can answer messages using any information you might think is useful from the memories the memories belong to the user then we have the message so that's what actually is uh, written as a chat to uh, you know within the chat widget and then we have memories and that's where we're passing in this list of memories here so you can see that in each message we are giving it our message but also our memories but that's how it's able to know all the information about us. And this is essentially what ChatGPT is doing when you're using memories within ChatGPT's website. So we're then using OpenAI as the large language model, and we are using the window buffer memory, and we've got this set to 10. So essentially this means we can just have a little bit of a longer conversation and it remembers the context, the back and forth, and that's not remembering the actual information, but just remembering what it is that we're talking about, how we're talking about it, and the context of the conversation, not the actual bits of information itself. And then this tool here is, um, what we use to look at the response and we say, in fact, sorry, we're looking at the input and we're saying, if there is any new information, in fact, let's open it up. The description here is, um, call this tool to take any particularly important information to store it in the database to be recalled later. The memory should be condensed as much as possible. Do not add any information to the memory database that is already there. And what this is doing is NA10 is going to use this as a tool. And whenever it sees any information in the input that we pass into our chat within NA10, it's going to take that and it's going to create an item within our Airtable table. 
and that's gonna be a new memory. So let's have a look at this tool. So this is the tool that it's cooling. Very, very simple, the most simple tool you can create. And essentially saying when it's fired, take the input, because what we're doing is we are collecting information and we are gonna take that information and we are simply putting that information as a memory within this table within Airtable. And to connect to Airtable, all we're doing is simply creating um, a new credential with the API that Airtable gives you. They give you an API token. You can go into uh, the developer settings and just create one very easily. And then we are adding that to the database. And as you can see, if we go back to the, the main flow, this is the tool that we are calling. We are calling this tool here just to add that information to Airtable. And we are saying, the information field or parameter which we need to make this run which we have defined here we need this to be defined by the model so ai is going to decide what information is being passed in and that way ai can handle it all so the flow of information is it asks a message it then goes and finds all the memories that it knows about the user brings it back into one field um, it will then uh, use both the question and all of the memories in order to prompt AI, and AI will give that response. But it doesn't just give that response, it also has a look at the input that we put in, um, and it uses that in order to put any more information into the database that it thinks might be useful. And that's exactly what we saw when we asked about, or when we told uh, this model that we like motorbikes, it said, oh, okay, that's a new bit of information, let's add that to the database, and then that's now being able to be used whenever it creates um, a, a result for us. So let's go through it again and see the data flow. So I'm going to reset this chat. All of the memory within the window buffer memory is now gone, but our memories within Airtable obviously is still there. And I'm gonna say um, my favorite, oh, favorite color is purple. So I'm just saying this to get this into the database and you can see we are calling this tool here because we want to put in that information. Um, I'm not really too sure what it's going to say back to that. It's a bit of a weird thing to say to a large language model. Uh, it says, okay, I've noted that your favorite color is purple. Is there anything else you'd like to share or ask about? Okay, so it kind of is aware that what we're doing is storing information. And if we go over to Airtable, we can see the user's favorite color is purple. So we can then go back, we can reload the chat and say, um, I am thinking, about getting a new motorbike. What color do you think I should get it in? And I imagine it's gonna say purple. You can see it's going and it's getting information in the first place from Airtable. And it's gonna come back and it's gonna say, since your favorite color is purple. And again, that's being pulled from Airtable. It's not in the context because we refresh the chat. That is just from the memories. Uh, since your favorite color is purple, I think getting your new motorbike in that color would be a great choice. And there you go. This is a very, very basic tutorial. You could apply this in many different situations. You could apply this within your business. If you wanted a, um, a marketing assistant, you could tell her everything about your business. You could change the prompt within this part here, which is where we are uh, storing information. And we could say, um, only store information that's relevant to our business, because you might not want it to remember everything, which brings me on to another point that if this is super long-term, it may not be the most efficient way to do it. It is the easiest way to do it, but it may not be the most efficient. And this is because every single time that we're asking a question, we are passing in all of the memories into this prompt, which means if you're talking to this model for months or even years, you're gonna build up a lot of memories, and therefore each time that you ask a question, it's gonna be passing in a lot of information, which means if you really want to do this super long-term, then uh, maybe a different approach would be better, such as um, a vectorizing the chat, However, if you just want to store some memories about you and also be able to have access to manually edit those so you can have a look at all the memories and you can say, um, actually, let's remove this one or I'm gonna add a few more in here or you wanna import memories from somewhere else, you can absolutely do that. So there you go, this has been a video on how you can create the simplest AI assistant which has unlimited memories by using NA10 and Airtable. If you have any questions, please do leave them down below. If you've liked this video, give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.